to bring you live an outside broadcast. The Department of Local Government and uh, Community Development have organized a consultation. It's a national climate resilience consultation for local authorities. And that is what we are here to bring live this morning. As I speak, quite a number of people are here for, for this event, representing, of course, various local government departments, village councils, and the like as well, and uh, even disaster preparedness committees. So quite a few people are here. A very nice setup at the, at the Goodwill, Goodwill Parish Hall. We are upstairs. Uh, they have made use of the space that, uh, that is here and it's, it's, it's really well set up you know for an activity like this to accommodate many people uh, and there will be a working session so the tables are neatly arranged so it looks like it will be um, a very educational consultation so we are here to bring live the opening ceremony of this consultation. This consultation is expected to end uh, later today, like about 4 o'clock. But DBS Radio, we are here for the opening ceremony. And very soon, this ceremony should begin. In fact, it was slated to start at uh, 9 o'clock. So let's see how soon we can start off. I think just one official uh, that the organizers organizers are waiting on to ensure that they can come to a start. So as I said, it's the National Climate Resilience Consultation for local authorities, and there's a theme for that. It is strengthening community resilience through local governments. On the 1st of May, local government, May, local government month, in fact, started in Dominica. There was a time when the observance was uh, one week, and, and then it moved on, I think, to two weeks. But uh, for many years now, it is a month of activities. Normally, it starts with a church service. There are radio discussions. There are consultations like what we are here for today. And uh, there are educational programs and activities as well to observe the month, which is very important, local government month. Uh, let me just give you an idea as to what the program is like for, for this morning, particularly the, the segment that DBS Radio will be bringing live. We are bringing live the official ceremony. So the business session will not bring that live, but the official ceremony. And the chairman of that proceeding will be Mr. Glenroy Tuse. And Glenroy Tuse, of course, is the local government commissioner. And as I speak, I see Glenroy Tuse getting ready to go to the podium. But as I said, there is uh, one official that they are waiting. And as soon as that official arrives, we will see the start of uh, proceedings here at the Goodwill Parish Hall. So there was registration prior to the opening ceremony. Registration started at 8.30. And then we saw the arrival of dignitaries. And as I said earlier, quite a number of people are here for, for this very important consultation. And uh, so we'll have the call to order by the chairman, Glenroy Tuse, Father Charles Martin, parish priest is here for the, for the prayer. Yolan John Jules, who is the chairman of DALCA, will give the opening remarks. DALCA, of course, is the Dominica Association for Local Community Authority. And uh, then we'll have open remark, opening remarks from Mr. Mr. Lucian Blackmore. I see now the minister is coming in. I think uh, they, are waiting, they were awaiting the arrival of the minister, so we should start soon. Minister Rosalind Paul making her way now up front. We should have remarks as well from Honorable Dr. Vince Henderson, who is uh, the Minister with Responsibility for Planning for Economic Development. Climate Resilience is also on his agenda, as well as Sustainable Development and uh, Renewable Energy. And as I speak, I see quite a few more people coming in to this gathering here at the Goodwill Parish Hall. And then we'll have remarks from uh, Honorable Rosalind Paul, who is the Minister with Responsibility for Sports, for Culture and uh, Community v Development. And uh, Her Worship, Ermin Roye, the Mayor of Roseau, she's up front as well. She's at the head table and she is expected to give the vote of thanks at this consultation. And then there will be a break and at that break, of course, DBS Radio will end the broadcast because as I said, we are here only for the official opening of this, uh, this consultation. 
and later on there will be the business section and uh, in that business session you'll find presentations there'll be open discussion more presentations in fact several presentations in the business discussion uh, defining a resilient Dominica, key metrics, targets, and milestones. That's one of the presentations, and that presentation, presentation is expected to come from Ambassador Francine Baron, who is the Chief Executive Officer for CREED, the Climate Resilience Execution Agency for Dominica. And right after her presentation, there is expected to be open discussion. And then there will be another presentation on the Green Climate Fund. This will be done by Michael Savre, who is the National Program Coordinator. So he will speak on the Green Climate Fund. And then after his presentation, there is expected to be open discussion. And, and that, that is very important, the open discussion coming right after the presentations. So participants will have... Um, an opportunity to ask questions, to make suggestions, to find answers. So this should be very interactive. And then there will be lunch. And following the lunch session, there will be a presentation on the role of council in disaster management at the community level. And uh, this will be done by Mr. Mandela Christian. Mandela Christian is the program officer at the Office of Disaster Management. And right after he makes his, his presentation, there too will be open discussion, and then the event should wrap up. And that will be done by the local government, government commissioner, who is the chairman of the proceedings here, Mr. Glenroy Tuse, and then the activity will come to a close. But we are bringing you the business session, the, not your business session, the opening ceremony, my apologies. The opening ceremony we are bringing you live here at the Goodwill Parish Hall, and very soon we should see the start of the proceedings. Uh, just a little more. And uh, so DBS Radio will be bringing that live to you as well. And this one is expected to be at 11 o'clock. But uh, what we are here for is the consultation um, called by the Division of Local Government and Community Development. It's the National Climate Resilience Consultation for Local Authorities with the theme Strengthening Community Resilience Through Local Governments. Okay, so what I will do at this time is uh, go over to go back to Studio One and uh, ensure that everything is ready. In fact, so we, we will stick around because I see Glenroy to say back at the podium and it appears that the ceremony is about to begin. So we welcome you to the Goodwill Parish Hall, DBS Radio, on an outside broadcast assignment for this very important activity which comes ahead of the, of the hurricane season. Of course, the, the official start of, of the hurricane season is on the 1st of June and um, an activity like that will really prepare all the stakeholders for, for the hurricane season when you look at uh, climate resilience and, 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 and the need to have a consultation for those involved in local authorities. This speaks volumes about okay, let me see a very preparedness. So let me, let me go now to the podium. Let me call this consultation to order the national consultation, climate resilient consultation for local authorities in Dominica. Let me call it to order as we begin our, the official opening of this very important activity here today for local authorities as part of Local Government Month 2022. At this time, we would like everyone to stand as we call on Father Charles Martin, the parish priest, to lead us in prayer. Good and gracious Father, you are the God of infinite merit and power, the God of all wisdom and justice, through whom all authority is rightly administered. 
Assists with your Holy Spirit of counsel, of fortitude, and of wisdom, the Minister of Sports, Culture, and Community Development, and all the staff who work in that ministry. We pray, Father, for the blessing and inspiration of all the staff who work in the Division of Local Government and Community Development as they continue to develop partnerships with communities, community-based organizations, local authorities in providing community needs, professional leadership and facilitation services through a process of community development. Father, may you continue to guide them in their effort to strengthen community resilience through local government. We pray in a special way today for the success of this National Climate Resilience Consultation for local government practitioners. May you bless this consultation from start to finish. Bless all presenters, all facilitators, all participants. We pray for full and active participation of all and look forward to sensible, noble, and practical recommendations that will be implemented for the benefit of all concerned and above all for effective You may be seated. Thank you very much, Father Charles Martin, for your wonderful prayer and, of course, gracing us with the Lord's presence at this very important activity here for us as local government practitioners in Dominica. At this time, to officially welcome you to this National Climate Resilient Consultation, it's my honor and privilege to call to the podium the chairman of the Dominica Association of Local Community Authorities, Mr. Yolan John Jones. Please make him feel welcome. Honorable ministers, permanent secretary, of the Ministry of Community Development, Mayor of Roseau, councillors, staff of the local government department, members and staff of DALCA. Today seems to be a very great day. We are going to talk about national climate resilience. As we know, before council's rule was very little in the communities. But today, we have increased roles in the amount that councils have to do, especially with the climate change problem and the effects that it have on our country. So today, as you gather together for this consultation, I hope you take proper notes and you prepare yourself to face the challenges that are ahead, because the climate has a lot of challenges for local government. We have the Sustainable Development Goals, the 17 goals, which village councils and town councils, city councils should also study carefully because there is a lot of work in it for local councils to do on the local level. As we know, we are the local authority on ground and which is the closest form of governance to the people. So let us take the opportunity to govern effectively for the further development of each and every community. With these few words, I wish to welcome each and every one of you to this session today. May God bless us and make sure you learn something when you live here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. John Jules, the chairman of the Dominica Association 
of local community authorities, and of course that's DALCA. And DALCA is the umbrella body representing the interests Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Let me first of all recognize Honorable Rosalyn Paul, the Minister responsible for Sports, Culture, and Community Development. Honorable Vince Henderson, the Minister responsible for Planning, Economic Development, Climate Resilience, Sustainable Development, and Renewable Energy. Her Worship, the Mayor, Ms. Ms. Roye, Mr. Roland John Jules, the chairman of DALCA. Mr. Glenn Roy Toussaint, the local government commissioner and all the staff of local government commission, local government department. Ladies and gentlemen, members of Dominican diaspora, living elsewhere, and of course, those of us at home, a very good morning to you all. I come here straight from the front line of the war on climate change. How many of us remember those words? Those, of course, are not my words. And those were the legendary words, legendary words, of the Honorable Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica some five days after the horrific experience we all experienced on the the dreadful arms of Hurricane Maria. And that was on the noble occasion when he was addressing a special session of the United Nations. And we all could recall PM was almost in tears. And I could put in context why he was almost in tears. Because it was only about two years before, 2015, that we experienced one of the most horrific displacement of our, of our people, where we had almost nine communities having to relocate. And I see some of the faces in the crowd this morning. I recognize them, of course, as Peter from T. Savan. <clears throat> Peter Savan, of course. We knew what we suffered on the tropical storm Erica. And at that time, in responding to the dreadful event, again, under the distinguished leadership of the Prime Minister of this country, he made the solemn vow to build back better. And that was very important because we should all bring into recall that after we suffered the dreadful experience of Tropical Storm Erica, we lost almost 90% of our sustenance of the country, 90%. And on top of that, just two years later on, you're experiencing a catastrophic event that was responsible for wiping off more than 90% of buildings on this country. And to put that into practical perspective, this meant when we calculated the damage, of course, with the help of the World Bank, we realized that we sustained damages to the tune of $2.53 billion. Again, in very practical terms, that is 160% more than your worth, your value, or your earning power. That's almost two times what Dominica worth. So you could understand the sheer scale and magnitude of the losses and damage we suffered coming from Hurricane Maria. Obviously, it cannot be, continue to be life as usual. So coming from Erica, the new mindset was building back better and suffering this horrific experience from Hurricane Maria, it was no longer building back better. It was declaring to the entire world that Dominica is going to be the first climate resilient country of the world. And sometimes I tend to bring to mind how many of us really truly understand what that means. And I like to speak in very practical terms, so bear with me for that. 
by the Honorable Prime Minister deciding that we're going to be the first climate resilient country in the world, one of the first things we had to do is to ensure we fully adopt the 17 Sustainable Development Goal, the 17 SDGs. So by doing so, it means Dominica will be the first sustainably developed country of the world. And that was enough, of course, to stimulate the widespread interest of the rest of the world, because everybody wants to be sustainably developed. So to do that, we decide, as the Prime Minister directed, that we're going to be the first climate resilient country in the world by 2030, which is about eight years, well, about seven years' time. So it means, therefore, by being a climate resilient country, that is predicated on a number of fundamental principles and key resource area. And I'll just take you from of the three most significant or relevant ones we this morning. One, it was building strong communities. Second, for us, it was building, it's bringing about an enhanced consciousness, collective consciousness. And it's by no coincidence we have here today culture and community development under the same portfolio. Because we don't have to think too very hard. Because if we put into perspective what does the word resilient mean, there is two very simple expressions or explanations for resilient. One is the ability to bounce back or to get up, dust yourself, and stride again with all the enthusiasm and determination. And the other one is the ability for something to restrain and withstand excessive strain and forces without failure. And if you look at the first one, the ability to bounce back, you can see that is, that's the human, that's the people focus. And the second one as well, as we like to call it, the hard wiring of things, is about your infrastructure, your physical as well as your economic infrastructure. So for us, it's very important in terms of our ability to bounce back. And by so doing, we go back into our mere tradition. And I can recall that the level of togetherness, the level of commitment, the level of identity that you had on the local level, where in the older days after an event like that, because Hurricane Maria was just one of the catastrophic, we have been, Lennox Hurricane, Dr. Henry Chit told us to back, that we have been re receiving a number of events like that. But it was our people's ability to stick together and build back better. What we knew very commonly in the old days are the Kudme spirit. So a neighbor house destroy, we all come together and we help to build him back. Or he has a house to, to move, we all will come in, and in the old days was coconut logs and tires to move from one lot to the next. And we can bring it back to our fishing days. I come from a fishing community, the community of Maho. And many a times the fisherman cannot afford to have helpers on his boat, so he'll rely on the community to come and pull the net in. And when you get a catch, everybody gets what you call in the old days your little low. So we have had that spirit for a very long time. And this is exactly what we're trying to stimulate this time. is ensuring that we are strong at the household level. Ensuring that we are strong at the neighborhood level. Ensuring that we are strong on the community level. And ensuring that we are strong on the national level. So it's about we understanding our new mindset that we have to be able to do things together if we are to remain resilient as a country. And that is exactly what the consultation is going to seek to do, to re-energize and to re-emerge in our minds the mindset, the thinking, and the sense of togetherness that we have had over, over the years to ensure that we become a resilient country. So one of the first things we want to do, recognizing as well from the experience of Hurricane Maria, at the community level, we may have a situation where we might be cut off from the rest of the country because of the nature of a road network, but we want to ensure that the community remain, can survive very comfortably at least for 15 days, having enough resources at your local level. And to do that, we have to be able, it's not a situation of survival of the fittest, where the strongest survive, but we have to understand all in a very loving 
amicable and helpful spirit each one day for each other that we're going to do it. So I really want to employ upon you to take those consultations very seriously. You are certainly leaders in your community that are going to have to lead from example. And bearing in mind as well, you're doing something for your own good. Because when the hurricane comes, when the disaster comes, it affects every one of us. Even myself, I wouldn't be fortunate enough to be in some office in, in, in Roseau, I'll be in my community. The same thing for the minister, she will be somewhere in Pebush. So whatever happens in your local um, domain is very important. So it's on that note, I really want to open the session this morning and to really employ upon you to take it very seriously, be participative. As I always say to people, the only dumb question is those not asked. So don't be afraid to question, challenge certain things. It's by so doing, we can really enhance what we have to make it better. And on that note, I really want to say it's a pleasure for me to be here this morning. I really want you to have a very successful consultation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Sports, Culture and Community Development. Of course, he gave a comprehensive opening remarks as it relates to the role that you have to play as local government practitioners. And he clearly outlined one of the key pillars within the Climate Resilient Recovery Plan, Sierra Rp 2020, 2030, and that has to do with strong communities. But how can we have strong communities if we don't have strong institutions? And we believe that the local government institution, the town, city, urban, Kalinago, and village councils are important and strong institutions that will seek to propel the vision of making Dominica the first climate resilient country in the world. At this time, we are always privileged to have with us very esteemed individuals. And this morning, it's my privilege to call to the podium the Honorable Vince Henderson, Dr. Vince Henderson, and he's the Minister for Planning, Economic Development, Climate Resilience, Sustainable Development, and Renew Renewable Energy. Please make him feel welcome, Honorable Dr. Vince Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Tuse. And Tuse, I think you need to tell your permanent secretary, as people from the West Coast, Moon Bodlame, the South Depart is low. So when you pull the net, what you pull out is yours, is your low, as they call it. Special good morning to my colleague, Minister Honorable Rosalind Paul, Permanent Secretary, President of DALCA, Father Charles Martin, other, oh, sorry, Madam. Um, your honor. Special good morning to our friends in the media, all the chairpersons of our local authorities, members of councils, city, town, village councils, urban council, he said, sorry, I, I have to take a lead from the president of that. But I want to say special good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Let me begin by expressing my sincere and profound gratitude to all of you who have made yourselves available to serve your communities. Your voluntary, dedicated service is what really makes our communities strong. And I want to thank you for that. I call it voluntary because we know that a lot is being asked of you with very little monetary reward. But it is your desire to serve your community, it is your love for your community that have put you in the position that you can serve your communities. I want to especially recognize the newly minted village council of Salisbury. I know um, for decades we have been encouraging you to join the family of councils and I want to congratulate you for doing that. And of course, your, I see some members of your council, some of whom I taught at school. I want to congratulate you. Russell, in particular, I know you top the polls. Congratulations, and I wish you well. But let's talk a little about resilience. Because, you know, sometimes we throw words around, and people just repeat them 
without really taking the opportunity, the time to understand exactly what they mean. So, every time I'm asked to speak on a topic, I like to define words. Because people put different meanings to words. Or, some, or sometimes people use words and they don't know the meaning. So, what is resilience? And I think in this case we're talking about climate resilience. But I like to deal with resilience more holistically, generally, all-encompassing. Because resilience is a word that we know well. Because Dominicans are one of the most resilient people in the world. But what does that mean? It means that whenever we're faced with challenges brought about by events, it can be natural, man-made, we have a way of responding, of bouncing back, as it were. So when Hurricane David hit us, and you looked around and everything was destroyed, we bounced back. We came back. With help from friends, partners, but most importantly, from ourselves, pulling ourselves together, pulling ourselves up by our own bootstrap. That is what resilience means, but it also means that we need to prepare ourselves in such a way that whenever those things hit us, the damage is not that big. So you don't fall down. Maybe you get a little push back, but you don't fall down. So in that case, it's easier for you to get back to where you were. So when we talk about resilience, think of it this way. You get a major hurricane, and maybe you will not get as much damage. And where we get the damage, we can fix that back so fast, you would never think we get past there. So we are focusing on ensuring that in order we can to withstand, that first we have infrastructure. Infrastructure is a nice big word that we like to use to one of those. But it's just simple things around us, the roads, the bridges, the schools, the health centers, especially public infrastructure. But most importantly, homes, our houses, where we live. You want to ensure that it, is, it, can, it can withstand some wind, some rain, some water. And this is why our government, in its commitment to make Dominica the first climate resilient nation in the world, has embarked on some very aggressive programs, some of which we started decades ago, but have been accelerated since the passage of Tropical Storm Erica and Hurricane Maria. So what we've done, we went on an aggressive housing program to ensure that families have strong, resilient homes. That's what we mean when you say resilient homes. It's the part about getting the damage. So you won't get much damage. And I was, you know, we were doing an assessment recently. And we've come to the conclusion that if Dominica were to be hit by a major hurricane or storm, that we will not see as much damage as we had after the passage of Hurricane Maria, unless God forbids that this thing becomes even worse than a Category 5. But what we have now, compare it, think about it, and some of you are around here. I'm all, I, I suspect you may have been around in Hurricane David, you were already a, a big man. So you saw what happened. You saw the damage, the level of damage that we suffered. And successively after hurricanes, you realize that we have less damage in certain areas because we built back better. So we built, we build in more resilient houses for families. And then let's go to another part of resilience, healthcare. So to ensure that we, again, think of resilience that way, you're hit, you don't get that much damage, and when you get that damage, you can come back very quickly to normal. So we have invested very heavily, 100 million, in the Dominica China Friendship Hospital. That is building resilience. So if we have a mass casualty situation, we now have better facilities to accommodate people so we can respond better. But before that, we invested heavily in primary health care at the local level. And I'm coming to the local level soon. At the local level, we now have resilient health centers. So in partnership with PAHO and the UK, the United Kingdom government, we're able to make 
a number of our health centers around the country more resilient. And in the case, we have La Plaine, Roseau, Grand Bay, and Pottsmouth Health Centers are all now more resilient. And you know what that means? So let's talk about the resilience at those health centers. Our health centers now have water supply, so there are water tanks somewhere, secured. Renewable energy and backup power. So we have solar power, you'll see the panels on some of the roofs, with battery storage, but also to make it really resilient, we have diesel generators in the background, just to ensure that they're okay. So we made those investments. We've also invested in modern resilient health centers in Colliho, Newton, Penville, Ansdeme, Bagatelle, and Soufrier. So they're more resilient. They can withstand the heat, and you can even sustain life without having to worry about the Wasco or Domlek connections. That is what we've done in case of health centers. In Marigot, about $50 million investment in the Marigot Hospital. That is a very resilient structure, if you've seen it. And it has backup power that can, I suspect, maybe given power to everybody in Marigot. So that is resilience. But that is infrastructure resilience. Schools, we've done the same thing with our schools. We, last week, two weeks ago, we, we handed over three rehabilitated schools. In Dalis, we invested over $1.3 million to make that school more resilient. In Monjon, we spent about a million dollars to ensure that the Monjon primary school is more resilient. In Marigot, at the W.S. Stevens Primary School, we invested $2.4 million to make sure that school is resilient. So if you get a hit, it can withstand. And in Grand Bay, we are investing about $3 million at the Grand Bay Primary School to make it resilient. And the $3 million is not because I ask for more money, but it's a really big school. So we try to make it resilient and to ensure that that school will be handed over soon to the community, as we've done for Dalis, Monjon, and Marigot. So that is what government has been doing. Communication, roads to make sure our roads are not blocked. We can move. If we have emergencies, we can take our families to get medical attention. We are investing more in roads. And in, in the East Coast Road, we are investing over $100 million to ensure that the road all the way from Castle Bruce, passing through Castle Bruce, from the, the junction at Pocasset going down, through Castle Bruce and through the Kalinago Territory, we we'll have a new road. We are expecting to see the commencement of work on the Lubia to Bagatelle Road passing through Grand Bay, with over $100 million being invested in that road. These are efforts to build resilience. But that is what central government has been doing. But let's talk about local government now. There is a saying that all politics is local. Well, I am making my own saying today that there can be no resilience without local participation. So that's mine. You can quote me on that. There can be no national resilience without local participation, which means, and I think the chairman as well as P.S. Blackmore mentioned, it is you at the local level that will help to bring in resilience into or humanizing it, let's call it that. Being able to ensure we protect people, we know our people at the local level. But I hope you'll permit me, and Mr. Tuse, you, I hope you'll allow me to expand local government beyond your remit. Because when you talk about local government, you get the impression we're talking about urban, as my friend just corrected me, urban councils. We talk about city, town, village, councils. That is what we think about when we hear local government. But I want to expand local government to include communities, the schools, the churches, the sports and service clubs, the health teams, the fishers and farmer groups. What about the local offices 
you know, we have, you have DDAs, DDOs, sports officer, um, social welfare officers. We have all kinds of officers, education officers. These are people who have been paid by the state to service a locality. So maybe a region, as the agriculture call it, or district, as education calls it. So health as well. Oh, we have environmental health officers. So all of these officers are all part of the local governance. They are all part of it. And therefore, if we are to make local government part of resilience building, strengthening resilience building, we must include them. So Mr. Tuse, I challenge you with that. And Mr. Tuse, you know because you and I, we got some scars together. We're in the war together after Hurricane Maria. Remember that. And we know what we went through. Seeking to provide support to communities. Man, that wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. And for the simple reason is, one, we did not have enough data. We did not have enough information. We don't know how many people we had to provide supplies to. We don't know how many people have chronic, you know, non-communicable diseases. People who needed special care, attention. People with health conditions. People who have respiratory problems. We don't have that kind of information. And that is what we need to do at the local level. So the days of having, and no disrespect to our disaster preparedness committees, remember we all have those in our communities. I serve in mine. I was a Boy Scout for a significant part of my life. And I remember volunteering, helping, caring the, the elderly, the sick, you know, the shortage, people who needed help, bringing them a little water, a little biscuit or something. But we need to step it up if we want to build resilience, if we want to strengthen resilience. We need to have data, we need information. There was a time when the district health officer, the team, the district health team and the committee had all the information. They had everybody's house number, they know who is where. If you wanted to find someone, just ask a district nurse. That was before. I don't know how it is now. So we need to know the people in our communities and where they are. And in building our resilience mapping, which we have done with the help of Creed, which is a creation of Post Maria, the Climate Resilience Executing Agency of Dominica, has created its own mapping system of vulnerability. But what we need is for your participation in bringing together all the local community leaders that I mentioned, the service clubs, the sports clubs, and so forth. And those public officers who service those districts need now to be given the responsibility to work more closely with you so that we can drive, have that information from the grassroots, from the ground, so that we can develop our own plan for responding in the event of a, of a disaster or major climate event, which sometimes we forget drought. Drought is part of it. Extreme drought is a problem. Bushfires, all of those things we have to build against. And then we like to build our house and think only about hurricane taking our roof. What about earthquakes? Volcanic eruption. We need to plan and to have a year-round system that will help to prepare us to reduce risk and to respond to risk. So that in this new dispensation, local authorities, I wouldn't call them government in that case, I'm speaking authorities, you, I'm referring to you, need to be able to identify some of the vulnerabilities within the community. You understand what I'm saying? I lost you somewhere, man. Everybody go, man. We need to be able to identify vulnerabilities in our communities. So, for example, you know that big drain? Cassie, you know the big drain that passed along by all the there? You know, you know that drain that coming from Alemon going down? And we need to identify those things as priorities. That is what causes the damage when we have those events. Excessive rain, floods, hurricanes, and so forth. We need to be able, at the local level, the local authorities need to bring to the attention of their parliamentary representatives, of their minister, of the government, that there are some vulnerabilities in our communities that we need you to address. 
and make this a priority. That is how we build resilience. So while you're identifying people who have special needs, with the support of your health committee, your health team, you also need to identify physical vulnerabilities that can cause damage in the event of a major disaster. Also, remember the road to go down by that old man who cannot walk, but you can't drive to go there? So if we have to evacuate him, how are we going to get to him? These are the things you have to look for. And that is what I consider to be the role of the local authority in helping to strengthen resilience. And once we can do that, we can prepare ourselves for any major event. Because we know how to bring our people, our vulnerable people to safety. We know where they are. We know their needs. And therefore, we can respond properly. So it's not a scattershot approach. So for example, when I was responsible for coordinating relief, we just make up numbers, I hate to say that. You say, well, boy, we want to send some stuff to, um, so let's say, well, well, I can't make up numbers for Vegas. PM will let me get away with that. So I can't use Vegas as an example. But let's just say you pick a, a community and you say, boy, from the last census, I suspect that's the number. You call Glenroy. Glenroy, but call your local, call your people. How much people we have in Kulibi Street? You know, how many people we need to provide for? But we don't know how many of them are children. We don't know how many infants we need to get supplies for to make sure they are safe. They have diapers, they have, you know, baby formula and that kind of stuff. We had a supply of baby stuff and we don't know where to send them and how many. That is what we need to do in a real practical way. When you have this resilience thing, you guys go in UN and go everywhere and talking about big language, nice words, everybody sounding smart, and Dominican's good at that, I must say. Um, you know, because we pick up stuff quickly. So we use those words, but what do they mean? That's what it means. Going down to baby formula in the community because you know how many children are infants, how many, how many elderly people who need adult diapers. These are the kinds of things we need to focus on in a very practical way. So I know that some of you in your local authorities, you may be thinking that, boy, them days there, you don't need village council again, you know, boy, power up doing everything. Now, nah, we, we, we need to make sure that doesn't happen. We need to ensure that the local authorities continue to remain an essential institution in the community and that they can play their role. But I will hasten to say that the local authorities also need to cooperate with the elected members of parliament. They need to cooperate with them. I'm not saying that you should allow them to lead you down a road that you may not want to go. If you have your objections, put it in writing. Inform the appropriate authorities. Call it out if you have to. But we need to work together. But well, I don't have that problem in Grand Bay. I'm always my partner from a long time. It's like a boy in my mouth. So when I'm ready, I go, well, I'm, I tell him what. But if you have to tell me no, he'll tell me no. Because I have to respect the man. I know he's a tiny boy. So. But the truth is, we need to work together. You need to find out. You need to work, have a working relationship with your member of parliament. Identify projects together. Implement them together. Identify community needs as a team. And bring it to your member of parliament. Let's make it work, because I am convinced we can do it. We have a long tradition of local authorities where we have been serving, we have been volunteering, and we need to continue in that spirit to ensure that we can make our communities stronger, more resilient communities. Thank you very much, Dr. Vincentison, for, I, I sat there and I said, listen, it's, it's, it's not a lecture, it's a, just a, a deliberation, a discussion, an engagement, and, and that's the kind of passionate individual Dr. Henderson is, and there's, it's not by accident that he is the minister responsible for climate resilience. In fact, I remember clearly, um, Puss Maria, his engagement, and he did mention the whole relief supplies, and, and, and I had to be supplying 
providing information and I roughly just simply say, for example, Campbell, 450 people and stuff like that, mm -hmm. coming from the, just from my own um, knowledge. But certainly, um, he has raised some very pertinent points as it relates to the significant role that the institution of local authorities play in building strong communities. And I want us, if it's one thing we've got to take, this morning and throughout the entire session today is the role that you must play in building the resilience that is required in our communities. And of course, he ultimately said there can be no national resilience if communities are not resilient. And it's expected of you to build that resilience within those communities. I once again, thank you very much on Dr. Vince Henderson. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, it's always an honor. This event is being hosted by the Division of Local Government and Community Development within the Ministry of Sports, Culture and Community Development. And there's no better person to address us this morning, the Honorable Minister with responsibility for Sports, Culture and Community Development, the Honorable Rosalind Paul. Please make her feel welcome. Let me first, this always happens, lower to meet the <laughs> short lady. Um, let me recognize my colleague minister, Dr. Vince Henderson, Honorable Vince Henderson, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Sports, Culture, and Community Development, Mr. Lucien Blackmore, her Worship, the Mayor of Roseau, Ermin Royer, President of Dalka, Mr. Yolan John Jules, Local Government Commissioner, Mr. Toussaint, the media, also um, Father Martin, and Importantly, you, all the participants, representative of the various local authorities across Dominica, a pleasant good morning to you. Let me first of all wish everyone here today a successful and memorable local government month. We, the month of May is local government month. In fact, the month of May is not only local government month, but the month for tourism awareness and also Domfesta. I am delighted to share a few thoughts with you on the occasion of the 33rd anniversary of local government month and for this National Climate Resilience Consultation. It is quite fitting that we are gathered here for this consultation to discuss the importance of building resilience at the community level through local government. As you heard from my colleague, there can be no resilience if you do not have the participation of local communities. It is always significant to get different views and to discuss ideas among local government practitioners on important areas confronting local government and the overall advancement of our people. The issue of environmental management, housing quality, infrastructure, the issue of disaster management, climate changes, and caring for our elderly and the most vulnerable are important matters that we must collectively find solutions for. This forum today provides you with a platform for having a conversation and I trust that you will participate fully in a healthy discussion on ways to build community resilience and by extension, a dynamic Dominica. We are all aware of the thrust of building a resilient Dominica. Our beloved Honorable Prime Minister continues to demonstrate exemplary leadership through the process of recovery. 
we are reminded of the fact that he spared no effort in declaring the vision of building the first climate resilient country in the world and has called on all of us Dominicans and friendly partners to join in this colossal undertaking. The work of the Honorable Prime Minister and the Dominican Labour Party led government has resulted in the establishment of the Climate Resilient Execution Agency, CREED. This agency is responsible for setting the stage towards the vision as, artic as articulated by the Honorable Prime Minister. We have also seen the development of the Climate Resilience and Recovery Plan 2020 to 2030. This document serves as a blueprint for achieving the desired good of becoming the first climate resilient nation and you, the local authorities, have a critical role in implementing this plan. I encourage councils to secure a copy of the document which can be found on the official website of the Government of Dominica and incorporate the CRRP in your plans and programs at village and municipal levels. So at village and urban councils, as well as the Kalinago, to ensure that we integrate the CRRP in your action plans. Later this morning, Creed will be making a presentation on the concept of a resilient Dominica, key targets and milestones. It is hoped that the presentation will bring clarity on the role of councils in building community resilience. Ladies and gentlemen, councillors and clerks, it cannot be debated that local government is a strategic vehicle for community empowerment and transformation. And it is within this context that local government is seen as a significant partner in building resilience at the community level. After all, you are on the ground, interacting directly, leading and guiding grassroots people, families and communities with love, care, and immeasurable voluntary service. One of the six result areas for Climate Resilient Dominica is strong communities. Strong communities refer to communities having the capacity to absorb stress or destructive forces for resistance or adaptation. The capacity to manage or maintain certain basic functions and structures during disastrous events and the capacity to reverse or bounce back. And I dare say, not just bounce back, but to bounce forward as we have shown as a government and people of Dominica. We have not only bounced back since Maria, we are bouncing forward. Strong Communities also focuses on key elements such as adequate access to shelter, food, water, power, telecommunications, and other basic services, social cohesion, disaster preparedness, and responsiveness. Okay, and here I speak of community social capital, the togetherness to combat chronic communicable disease. I want to emphasize that traditionally, councils and community practitioners worked with communities to ensure, for example, we had backyard gardening critical for food security, and we had tidy village competitions ensuring that the whole community kept um, the whole community kept the community clean, they cleaned the drains, and this is very critical to resilience. So I would call on you as community practitioners, development practitioners, to probably adopt and embrace again some of the traditional practices that we had that built resilience among our people. And importantly, uh, my colleague minister mentioned all the officers on the field 
who um, worked with the council and communities, and we need to bring that back. And I want to just mention and emphasize that this is one of the first directives that the permanent secretary and I discuss, that when you had these communities where there was a theme saying healthy people, healthy communities, and you had all of these officers working at a unit as, the, as a unit on the, at the community level, it was very effective, even in addressing the issues of um, chronic non-communicable diseases to combat this. So we need to go back to these, and I urge you, the councils here, to take the lead. I urge local authorities to redouble your efforts in bringing the communities together with a view to enhancing the collective consciousness of your residents, thereby reviving the Kudme spirit, which was once a household word, but not only a household word, it was a well entrenched, entrenched traditional practice. It is something that we lived, it was part of our life, and it is we see after every disaster how the Kudme spirit assists communities to bounce back quickly. Each council must ensure that the community disaster plan is developed and operationalized and that the entire community is made aware of the plan. Councils are also expected to play a leading role in the establishment of well-structured disaster management committees so as to improve the state of readiness of communities. It is imperative that the councils build capacity to respond to disaster since capacity building is the prerequisite for the successful outcome of community resilience. I am very pleased with the collaboration between the Division of Local Government and CREED in the execution of the Community Emergency Readiness Capacity Building Training for Vulnerable Communities. To date, a total of 246 individuals from the councils, disaster committees, disaster management committees, and other interest groups have been trained in 37 vulnerable communities around Dominica. This training has better positioned the communities to respond to adverse weather and climate events. I wish to call on the councils to continue to collaborate and participate in this Siri initiative and other initiatives which seek to help boost the community's capacity for disaster management. As we approach the next hurricane season, I must take the opportunity to encourage you to move swiftly to make all necessary preparedness for the upcoming hurricane season. You must ensure that your disaster committees are activated and reactivated, and that you meet your people to provide them with relevant information for their own safety. Rest assured, your government will continue to provide financial, technical, and other support to those in need. Government will also continue to partner with the councils to deliver services of its recovery program to strengthen the resilience of communities island-wide. In closing, I again wish all of you a productive consultation and a successful local government month. May the good Lord continue to shower his blessings upon you. May God bless the Commonwealth of Dominica. I thank you. Thank you very much, the Honorable Minister of Responsibility for Sports, Culture, and Community Development. We are so very blessed in our ministry to have our minister was a social activist, a community leader, a, a development individual concerned about the development of, of communities. And I'm happy that she articulated the progress that we've made. And of course, just last week, the Honorable Minister led a delegation at a Caribbean local government conference where Dominica took center stage 
where we, I, I was pretty surprised at the manner in which that the other Caribbean view Dominica as far as resilience is concerned. And we had the opportunity to make some presentations as to um, the various activities that we're undertaking in Dominica as far as climate resilience um, is concerned. And of course, one of the highlights too is the significant progress that women have made in local government. In fact, Dominica has the highest percentage of women participation in local government in the Caribbean. We had 43%, while the all other islands are staggering at 20% and 22%. We have 43% of the composition of our councils are women. And that's outstanding for Dominica. And, and I think we, we made the map. Yeah. So we are making progress uh, as far as New Zealand is concerned. And um, I will tell you, for example, that I have had to, I mean, during my stay in Barbados, I had several meetings with local government commissioners of the other islands and I had to be giving them as to how we did it and what we're doing and how they can um, of course take on board some of the activities and programs that we have implemented as far as resilience. So Dominica is leading the way in terms of resilience in the region and it's all because of the efforts that we all put, the government, the people, the councils, other institutions in leading the way to ensure that we become the first climate resilient nation in the world. At this time we are coming to an end to this official opening of our national consultation and it's an honor and privilege to call the Mayor of Roseau, our worship, Ermin Roye, to give us the vote of thanks. Please make a feel welcome. Head, head table, Father Charles Martin, councillors, Chairpersons, Creed, the media, good morning. It is for me a distinct pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this now including very important national resilience consultation for the local government authority. Building resilience in any context, in any institution, in any community, or in any country is of paramount importance, especially in this time when natural disasters are becoming more frequent and more intense. Over the past few years, the word resilience has been used very often. But have we taken stock of the true meaning of the word in particular sense? Today, Today's consultation has enlightened us. It has provided and armed us with the necessary information to be able to take appropriate actions. I was fortunate to have been part of a Dominica delegation who traveled recently to Barbados under the Caribbean Development Bank sponsored municipality finance project where we present and discuss various aspects of our action plans under the sustainable di discussion, discussion various aspects of our action plan under the suspension development of goals, which dealt with climate change action and resilience framework. Similarly to the concentration of objective was enhance our understanding in our approach in dealing with very serious issues that continue to affect us all locally and regionally. It is fitting at this stage to applaud you for your knowledge and information which you have shared with us. Our participation in forums like this as local government, as local government participation offers us the necessary skills which are required to place our council, community, people in the state of readiness and the ability to bounce back faster in likelihood of any disaster. This capacity building effort has done just that. And I must commend the Ministry of Sports 
Culture and Community Development, and the Department of Local Government and the Community Development for organizing such a timely consultation, especially, even, especially on the eve of the hurricane season. To all special invited guests presenting and participating today, National Consultation, I thank you for your contribution in sharing with us very important information. The information shared and the interaction will further empower all of us. As we look for the best possible approach in dealing with these effects of climate change and adopting the military action of combat, this very serious problem with these few words, I conclude again by thanking all of you for making this event a very successful one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor Rory. We want to thank you for thanking us. We also want to thank the Government Information Service and DBS Radio for bringing this life to the wider population in Dominica and, of course, in the diaspora. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the official opening of this National Climate Resilient Consultation for local authorities in Dominica. We'll take a break and we will continue with our sessions, our first presentation. So we're taking a break and thank you very much again for being here with us. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's where we as well come to the end of uh, the live broadcast, the DBS Radio. We are here only for the opening ceremony. There is a business session to follow. We will not be bringing that live, but we will happy to bring you live the opening of the National Climate Resilience Consultation for local authorities, an activity organized by the Department of Local Government and uh, community development and there's a theme for for this activity here at the Goodwill Parish Hall. It is strengthening community resilience through local government and we heard from from uh, several dignitaries at this function here. We, we heard from uh, Mr. Yolan John Jules who the chairman of Dal Dalka and he really gave the welcome remarks. And, and right after he did that, we heard from Mr. Lucien Blackmore, who is the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Sports, Culture and Community Development. We heard as well from the Honorable Dr. Vince Henderson, who is the Minister with Responsibility for Planning, Economic Development, Climate Resilience, Sustainable de Development and Renewable Energy. And we also heard from the Minister for Sports, Culture and Community Development, Honorable Rosalind Paul. And just a short while ago, we had the vote of thanks delivered by Her Worship Ermin Ruye, who is the mayor of Roseau. So, so Dominica really continues to play its part in the war on climate change. The process continues really to strengthen the resilience of communities throughout the island. And um, we all know that Dominica is continuing with these steps to, to become the first climate resilient country in the world. So several activities like this uh, are happening and uh, the business session is con is to is expected in fact to continue until this afternoon we will not be bringing you that and of course uh, there's another function that DBS radio will be at this morning that's at 11 o'clock we'll be going over to the police headquarters to bring you live uh, a press briefing call by the minister for national security so dbs radio will be bringing that life to you so what i'll do right now is go back to studio one and just say as well thanks to our technicians on duty aaron wiltshire and denzel Schillingford, taking you back now to dbs radio studio one i've won a john baptist Luge. good morning <laughs>